Hello friends good afternoon and welcome to your reset live lectures dear friends today in philosophy we will be continuing with philosophy of mind and we will be doing introduction to the philosophy of mind part 3 In today's lecture, we will try to understand historical aspects to the philosophy of mind, as well as uh, different philosophers and uh, how they discuss the uh, concept of philosophy of mind. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Dr. Ajay Verma. Dr. Verma is associate professor in Center for Philosophy, School of Social Sciences, JNU. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome, Sir. Thank you, Mr. Uh, so welcome viewers uh, so as you are already aware today will be uh, we will be uh, looking at uh, different aspects of uh, philosophy of mind and uh, this lecture is going to be uh, the third in the series uh, so before we begin uh, let's you know recapitulate uh, some of the issues that uh, we have very briefly uh, discussed earlier so uh, in in that line uh, first thing that we need to look at is uh, what is uh, the main uh, main main a uh, subject that you know we deal with what are the main issues what are the main problems that you know we deal with uh, uh within the domain of uh, philosophy of uh, mind uh so philosophy of mind uh, very broadly uh, you know there there are several definitions that we can come across uh, you know on, on web sources or you know different uh, different books that are there are there uh so these definitions you know are uh, somewhat like this Uh, philosophy of mind is supposed to mainly concern itself with reflections on the nature of mental phenomena and especially on the relation of mind to the body and to the rest of the physical world uh philosophy of mind uh, according to another definition is the branch of philosophy that studies the nature of the mind which means mental events mental functions mental properties and very importantly consciousness uh, and its relationship to the physical body so as you can see you know the from these definitions uh, the main uh, subject matter uh, you know some of the main issues that uh, we deal with when we are talking about uh, philosophy of mind is uh, you know is regarding uh, you know what what exactly uh, sort of you know we understand uh, by mind especially since it is not uh, something physical in nature uh, but very importantly uh, you know without being physical in nature uh, there are evidences we have overwhelming uh, you know uh, evidence to suggest that uh you know there, there, there this this something non physical has an ability to 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 uh to give uh, to you know in a certain way relate to uh the physical uh you know to the to the physical realm uh within our body and uh, you know especially within our body so that uh, you know like i mean our, our body mainly uh, it's supposed i mean one of the simplest models that we work with uh, you know is that uh, uh, we take decisions uh, you know uh, for uh, for like uh, day to day things as a matter of fact you know uh we 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 take decisions for like everything i mean every, every moment as a matter of fact we are taking decisions in the sense that even when you are moving out of the room then you know every step when you take uh, you know it it happens because of you know some process uh, which has some trigger somewhere so so uh so even for small little things like you know my deciding to uh to open the door before you know so that i'm uh, you know i'm i'm able to walk out of the room and and so on and so forth uh, all actions uh, presuppose some kind of uh, some kind of uh, you know decision making in, in in the mind some kind of uh, you know command that we receive uh, you know from from somewhere which uh, which you know through which our uh, physical body becomes uh, you know uh, activated and starts working uh towards uh, you know towards the goal that uh, we have uh, conceived uh, you know in in our mind so small little things also require uh, you know uh, some kind of decision making and and as a matter of fact uh, uh, there is uh, already an important work uh, on this uh, you know by one of the nobel nobel laureates uh, uh, named shifrin uh, shifrin uh he he is is known for his very famous work thinking fast thinking slow so there the thesis that is proposed though though uh, he he received uh, the nobel prize for uh, uh, his work in economics but this book uh, is is largely about uh, you know how our our, our decision making uh, you know happens how we take decisions 
and uh, you know the point that he's trying to make is that uh, that uh, you know there are certain things of, uh, about which our thinking processes happen in a very fast manner uh, like you know like some kind of mundane things like uh, when you are uh, looking at an object uh, your mind already has you know structure for it so that structure you know gets immediately i mean the, it, our mind already has a conceptual scheme for it so uh, you know uh, and then mind seems to be too sure about it so whenever we have something across us uh, which uh, you know uh, which fits very well th- within that conceptual scheme then in such cases we don't do uh, you know some kind of deep contemplation some kind of uh, deep reflection over things so some of these processes happen very fast like you know you come across uh, uh, you know you happen to see a flower uh, uh, growing on a plant so so you know you 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 sort of uh, decide immediately there is a plant uh, so you know when we are uh, sort of uh, looking in several different directions uh, you know say for example even when you're walking you are you know deciding to move in particular direction and not move in uh, you know another direction so all that happens because you know, for these processes uh, for these uh, small little sort of decisions that we have to take uh you know our our our, our mind already has uh, you know sort of uh, short term resources i mean uh, so resources which 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 are which are uh, which which uh, you know expedite our uh, are uh, not so important decisions not uh, not uh, you know uh, decisions which are like uh, which are uh, which are uh, in a certain way mundane in character which which are which are you know which are uh, uh, everyday in character so to speak whereas for certain other kind of decisions we require uh, you know more uh, uh, you know serious reflection at uh, you know for for certain kind of things we require a deeper kind of contemplation so so you know there could be several of such cases uh, uh, like uh, like uh, you know if if uh, if, uh, if if there is some kind of a crime committed uh, you know uh, by by uh, somebody uh, there are you know so before giving the due punishment there are several considerations you know that that one has to go through there is a proper law for it uh, and and even for from the moral point of view some kind of you know uh, deep contemplation uh, is is required or, or you know uh, since uh, uh, you know this person got uh, uh prize in in economics i mean in 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 in, in, ma- in the matters uh, you know of of money uh we require you know taking uh, a very uh, very sort of our decision making you know needs to be uh, uh to a very good extent uh, you know serious in nature we think a lot you know before we decide to you know invest invest uh, Uh, our money in 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 you know in particular ways with particular institutions so so you know, the point here is that uh, that there is absolutely uh, you know no gain saying uh, uh, the fact that uh, that uh, you know we we require decision making and uh, very often the decision making is about uh, you know is about uh, taking uh, important actions uh, about you know the world around us which is largely physical in nature so uh, so therefore uh, the broad subject matter uh, you know that we that we uh, that we uh, sort of look at uh, within the domain of uh, philosophy of mind is uh, you know is, is to explore to is to is to examine uh what exactly happens in our mind when you know when we say for example contemplate uh, contemplation is supposed to be a, a kind of a mental process so since we think that it's a mental process uh, we don't think that it's a bodily process uh, uh, for obvious reasons uh therefore uh, you know we we want to know about uh, what uh, what you know what kind of a state our uh, mind is in how to describe that state uh is that state uh, you know some kind of a f- uh, you know has some kind of a physicality uh, about itself because you know, now with new technology like uh, like uh, uh, uh mri scans and and so on and so forth uh, you know we we know that when we are thinking about particular things there are particular regions in our brain 
uh, which you know which show uh, a, a kind of uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, which, which gets suddenly activated which show signs of you know what we call uh, neuron firings i mean there there are sort of a very fast uh, uh, some kind of you know, synapses, uh, some, some kind of neural connections uh, happen, uh, you know, uh, start happening very fast uh, in, in, in certain, you know, uh, uh, regions of the brain. So, uh, so you know, the, the subject matter here is, is uh, what exactly happens, say, for example, when we are... Uh, when we are uh, engaging ourselves in, in some kind of uh, decision making, uh, when we are contemplating about something, uh, what exactly happens in the mind? Uh, and if these uh, you know, processes involve, uh, you know, uh, these are mental processes, uh, you know, so that means uh, we, we require to have you know, some kind of knowledge regarding what is the constitution? I mean, what, what, how, how are these mental states constituted? Uh, what exactly happens? So, you know, there are several questions that arise when we are talking about these mental states. Uh, some of the questions are uh, regarding the substance. Uh, regarding you know uh, the ontological nature of uh, those uh, uh, those states. So, you know, regarding substance, say for example. Uh, uh, since uh, you know these these uh, uh, earlier in the notion, I mean, in, in most the in most the uh, sort of ancient philosophies, we find you know, this this idea that uh, that substance you know comes across uh, with you know uh, with, with with its own set of qualities. So uh, the you know substance has a particular well delineated uh, you know domain of itself. So it has. Uh, uh, some kind of uh, you know essence of its own, and and therefore you know it has uh, a very well delineated uh, delineated uh, sort of domain of itself. Uh, it it would do certain things and it wouldn't do certain other things. Say for example, uh, fire burns, uh, but water does not. Uh, water instead uh, you know is is responsible for uh, wetting things and as a matter of fact its nature is uh, exactly opposite uh, you know that of uh, that of uh, water so these two elements are uh, exactly uh, opposite in 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 nature so so uh, so therefore and and even for you know like, I mean, even if we look at the discipline of of chemistry we find that uh, you know all the different elements have different kind of uh, affinities some elements combine with certain others and there are elements which which do not combine uh, with each other at all as a matter of fact uh, they are like uh, uh, opposite you know they are of uh, opposite natures they 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 are uh, they are inert substances uh, which means that uh, they don't combine at all they have you know they come they they come along with some kind of saturation uh, uh, about themselves within themselves so things have some kind of essence about themselves and uh, therefore they have a well delineated sphere of of you know of uh, of properties of activities and 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 so on and so forth so so uh, the idea in philosophy of mind is to reiterate uh, to to uh, you know to look at it once again is is you know to to look at uh, what, what what exactly is the is the nature of uh, of uh, mental states uh, uh, you know from the point of view of ontology uh, what is the ontological you know sort of uh, nature of of uh, of, of mind uh, what uh, should, should we should we look at uh, it from the point of view of substance also is it a different substance. Uh, uh, in itself, uh, uh, which is you know entirely different, uh, you know, from uh, the other sphere, which is the sphere of the physical, uh, and and uh, and uh, you know, and and uh, one another very important uh, you know issue to look at is what exactly do we mean by consciousness? Uh, is is consciousness some kind of uh, property of mind? Uh, some kind of, uh, for that matter, I mean, does it arise out of uh, the physical brain? Uh, what exactly do we mean uh, when we say conscious? Uh, does consciousness mean everything that is uh, there in the mind uh, comes into the realm of uh, consciousness? 
or uh, there is lot else to the mind uh, you know that is uh, apart from what is defined by consciousness so is uh, consciousness uh, coextensive uh, with uh, with with mind is mind in turn coextensive with brain uh, is mind uh, something larger than you know what we call consciousness as uh, uh, psychologist you know would tend to advise us uh, is there is mind something more than brain Uh, can can uh, you know the physical processes that uh, go on uh, within the brain comprehensively exhaustively uh, define uh, account for all the functions uh, you know that that uh, that happen inside the mind that you know we generally uh, hold mind responsible for uh, can brain account uh, you know for uh, for Uh, for the phenomena of 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 uh, consciousness uh, because uh, you know brain seems to 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 exist uh, you know it seems to able to like to be able to exist uh, without uh, without consciousness so even when there is no consciousness brain uh, brain is is still there uh, one of the examples is is, uh, is deep sleep so you know there there are sort of like uh, activities kind of uh, you know different kind of activities happening inside the brain even when we are sleeping but uh, we have a very little reason uh, you know to to say that uh, we hardly have any reason to say that uh, that we are conscious uh, even when we are uh, you know in deep sleep uh, though uh, uh, in 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 indian philosophy especially in in advaitic tradition uh, you know th- there is a whole different uh, take uh, on the issue we will we'll discuss that in 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 a, in a separate lecture so uh, so uh, you know to recapitulate uh, this is largely uh, you know domain of of of, of philosophy of mind and uh, we have already been discussing uh, uh, about in different issues uh, uh, along along different lines and uh, uh, apart from that uh, there are different theories uh, you know which we need to understand uh, uh, before you know, we we start talking about uh, other things one is uh, a dualism uh, according to dualism uh, uh, mind and and matter are or mind and body for that matter uh, are are uh, as two entirely different substances uh, and uh, and and uh, you know they 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 there are sort of according to tekart there there are ways in which uh, you know these two different kinds of substances uh, are able to interact with each other so dualism is the idea that we we uh, we think of mind and body as two different substances as two different substances and uh, you know with that presumption we try to theorize further regarding uh, given the fact that there are these two different substances uh, how to account for uh, whatever kind of coordination between these two substances uh, for that matter you know we might want to believe that there is uh, there is no interaction happening so but but you know the main point here is that uh, we think of uh, you know mind and body or mind and matter as as two different different realms together you know uh, as as two different realms all together and uh, with this presumption we you know move forward further uh, with you know with uh, different theories different theorizations that uh, you know we may come up uh, as opposed to that uh, the other theories uh, you know the other other kind of theories you know involve some kind of reductionism so you know they are like non dualist or monist uh, you know kind of uh, kind of uh, you know takes uh, on 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 the issue uh, and and uh, two major uh, you know uh, uh, two major views uh, under this heading would be uh, so there's dualism on one hand and then you non dualist theories or monist uh, you know monism on, on the on the other hand under monism we would have mainly uh, materialism and idealism uh which basically so uh, uh, materialism is basically uh, uh, you know the idea that uh, that uh, uh, world basically is constituted of of matter and uh, you know what as uh, you know we come across as uh, uh, non material non physical uh is basically nothing but uh you know but a property of the physical so uh the broader idea here is that what we think of as non physical 
and mind would be one such entity consciousness also you know since it's uh, non material in nature would be one such entity and uh, you know these entities on this view can be explained uh, away completely uh, you know by accounting for some kind of you know by 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 giving some kind of material account of things so you know material uh, might have uh, you know certain kind of nature uh, material uh, also may have some kind of properties which may be non physical in nature so one of the presumptions here is that that uh, everything physical does not necessarily uh, mean that uh, it would not have non physical properties so you know here uh, the idea is that uh, you know the fine line between uh, the physical and non physical is 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 uh, blurred is is kind of almost uh, is almost uh, given up so you know a non physical could be an extension could be an extension of the physical and and therefore uh, you know uh, we are could be in a position to explain a non physical uh, you know from the point of view of physical uh, if if we are able to uh, we sort of you know give an account uh, give a proper account, physical account of uh, certain uh, processes that we otherwise call mental processes uh, then you know it should do the job for us so it's not necessary that uh, you know there needs to be uh, uh, you know reasons causes which need to be non physical in nature if they have to act all account for uh, uh, you know non physical processes uh, uh, under which you know, we would also take into consideration mental processes so for non physical processes we do not necessarily we don't necessarily need to have a uh, non physical account so we might have a physicalist kind of an account we might have a material account uh, you know for explanation of for explaining uh non physical properties and uh, one such example actually i mean one of the most ancient example of it you know we come across in 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 ancient uh, indian philosophy so uh one of the schools of uh, you know classical indian philosophy namely uh, charvakas uh suggests that uh, you know that consciousness what what we call consciousness which is you know supposed to be non material in nature uh is a product of something that is physical in nature and uh, you know they offer uh, certain examples like uh, like uh, like uh, you know chewing the betel nut so they say that uh, uh, you know when we when we chew uh, betel nut uh, you know certain properties which which was not there before namely a red color uh you know comes uh, comes to the fore when you know certain sort of uh, certain uh, uh, kind of uh, sort of processes take place uh, another example that they offer is you know that of uh, liquor preparation so some of uh, you know the 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 matter uh, some of the material which uh, does not otherwise have uh, the property to in you know the property of intoxication uh actually comes to have those properties uh, you know uh, when uh, it go undergoes when it uh, goes through a certain kind of process and that we call fermentation so uh you know properties like intoxication which uh, basically you know uh, sort of uh, which which uh, mainly are defined in terms of uh, what happens to the mind when uh, you know when when mind uh, is activated uh you know with 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 uh, with some kind of uh, you know uh, chemical combinations some kind of combinations so 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 overall idea here is that uh, we may have uh you know we may have physical things uh which may have certain properties which may be not not phys- which may be not physical in nature so for example in this property of uh, intoxication it does not have any visible signs uh, you know when you look at uh, liquor so liquor you know in itself seems to be a very benign kind of a liquid you know sitting uh, there inside a glass uh, but but you know the effects of it uh, wouldn't be manifest 
unless you know we uh, we we drink uh, you know that that liquid and so so you know it does have a property that of uh, you know that namely of uh, intoxication but that property uh, you know uh, has no physical dimension this is why uh, you know, uh, it, it it becomes very difficult to say. You know, uh, whether a given liquid uh, would would have some properties of you know mental, of of, of you know intoxicating us. So, uh, so overall idea here is uh, in materialism is that uh, you know we can account uh, for a certain non-material, non-physical uh, you know uh, processes uh, that happen inside us. Uh, importantly, mental processes, also consciousness. Uh, we can explore, explain all of them uh, in in material terms purely you know by by sort of uh, uh, explaining the certain properties of material. Uh, uh, as opposed to that, idealism, you know, is the idea that uh, that uh, you know uh, even body, uh, you know, since uh, everything that we perceive, since everything, you know, sort of the questions that we ask, uh, even in philosophy of mind, the kind of questions that we ask, uh, everything happens, uh, you know, inside the mind. So mind is more primary, uh, and and any kind of what we call physicality is secondary because what we call physicality is also an idea inside the mind and what we call physical is nothing but uh, the you know certain kind of givenness you know inside our consciousness so so you know uh, what we call physicality is basically you know the 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 the, the so called you know, certain properties that characterize uh, you know an object say for example some kind of solidity in it uh, uh, some kind of texture color and and so on and so forth so physicality you know what we call physicality uh, is basically at the end of the day nothing but a certain kind of givenness certain kind of presentation to the consciousness and so far that is the case uh, we can reduce you know any talk of physical uh, to you know to to uh, you know we, we can reduce any talk of physical uh, to certain ideas in terms of ideas and therefore uh, you know all physicality can be you know explained away in terms of idealism uh, before we sort of proceed further, uh, let's also very briefly look at uh, some of the other uh, terms, uh, you know, that uh, we may want to be familiar with uh, when we start uh, you know, talking about uh, about philosophy of mind. Now, in philosophy of mind, there is a, a certain uh, theory called uh, functionalism. Functionalism is, is uh, you know, generally uh, broadly defined as a theory. Uh, about the nature of mental states. Uh, so this is a theory about the nature of mental states. Uh, according to functionalism, uh, mental states are identified by what they do rather than by what they are made of. Uh, this can be understood by thinking about artifacts like mouse traps and keys. So overall idea here is that uh, you know we shouldn't concern ourselves so much with the substance. Uh, so in the ontological question, uh, uh, you know uh, that that we otherwise hold so important, uh, which was you know so which was very much the case if we look at uh, all you know sort of uh, the ancient ideas, the 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 uh, the history of of you know ideas in Western philosophy or, uh, or in Eastern philosophy. So causality, you know, causation was one uh, huge issue, was considered one, uh, you know, very, very important issue. So because if we, if we understand the cause of, of things, uh, then, you know, we understand uh, also the nature of things. If you understand the cause of things, then, you know, we might have a good explanation for, uh, you know, uh, the nature of, of, of things. So, if if we if we this is why you know even in Indian philosophy, uh, there are these two important theories, namely Satkaryavad and Asatkaryavad. So so uh, you know uh, in the Satkaryavad theory, uh, you know which 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 is mainly uh, sort of uh, propounded by. Uh, Advaita philosophy uh, is of the view that everything is, you know, has, has is composed of one substance, uh, namely Brahman, uh, as, and and uh, and uh, and and uh, you know, on 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 the other account, uh, 
uh, and and uh, sort of you know uh, and and uh, on, on 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 account of materialism, uh, everything is composed of you know certain kind of uh, material. But but so so you know the question of substance is uh, not given so much of importance uh, when it comes to functionalism. Rather, you know what we give more importance is uh, you know the function of of uh, you know the the thing that we that is under consideration, uh, namely mind and body. So uh, so viewers will be uh, continuing. Uh, our, our discussion about uh, philosophy of mind uh, will uh, return uh, after a short break. Thank you. So uh, before uh, we went for a break, we will talk. We were talking about uh, you know functionalism. Uh, functionalism, as uh, you know, we saw is uh, is, is is an idea that. Uh, that uh, you know when we are talking about mental states when we are trying to understand uh, the nature of, of mental states then we do not uh, you know take into consideration uh, you know the substance uh, you know part of it so so you know we, we we don't necessarily need to concern ourselves we don't necessarily need to engage with questions like uh, uh, what is it made of uh, what is uh, what you know if, if we are talking about states mental states we don't need to necessarily you know take into consideration what is the substance of mind how you know sort of uh, what is the nature of substance of mind uh, it ha and you know then so then you know, like uh, next consequence of it would be uh, if it, uh, it if it is a substance then it has to be completely different in nature uh, you know from uh, from the other kind of substance namely body so that was the idea basically that uh, descartes came up with that that uh, uh, you know there's a different kind of substance which comes for uh, thinking that he calls uh, res cogitans and uh, there is another kind of uh, substance which uh, uh, which you know accounts for physicality of things which he terms as uh, uh, res extensa so uh, so on, 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 according to functionalism we don't need to the, the question of substance is not so important is not so consequent uh, is not so con uh, consequential for us uh, when we you know take into account uh, the nature of mental states then what uh, if if this is not important then what else is uh, according to functionalists what is more important is uh, is is you know the function uh, of of uh, you know uh, the, the, the uh, of of mind I and mean, what what kind of sort of uh, what kind of functions uh, certain mental uh, you know uh, states uh, could could account for so basically the idea is that uh, we should take into into consideration uh, you know the nature of function uh, when we are talking about mental states and we should not give the same kind of importance to the question of substance so say for example uh, you know there are several things uh, which you know we define uh, you know which we define uh, uh, in terms of the function that we achieve of them you know from them uh, so say for example in the, the the popular idea the popular uh, example here is uh, mouse traps so mouse traps uh, you know could be of different kinds uh, you know the popular one is uh, you know this this uh, cardboard on which uh, there is you know this other uh, kind of uh, spring attached and uh, but but there could be several kinds of them there is another one which you know has uh, uh, some kind of a small eatable or small bait for the mouse and when the mouse enters you know the 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 uh, the, the only way through which it came in uh, you know is is closed such that it does not have a way out uh, in such kind of traps you don't necessarily kill the mouse uh, so you know there are like uh, there 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 could be uh, several kinds of uh, 
mouse traps now here it is not so important uh, you know uh, uh, the question of what the mouse trap is made of is is uh, not so much of uh, uh, consequence to us is is not always uh, you know consequential for for uh, for us what is important for us to, is to on is to you know look at it from the point of view of what function it achieves uh, so similarly uh you know uh, uh similarly similarly if we talk about say for example uh, uh, uh microscopes so there could be different kinds of microscope uh, you know there could be sort of um, uh, electronic microscope there could be uh, you know uh, other kind of uh, sort of uh, uh, microscopes which don't require any electrical input uh, so so uh, so there are other kind of microscopes you know which which uh, which uh, uh, you know don't uh, which which uh, you know in which we don't use so much the light but we use uh, you know atomic particles to to have a very very magnified view of things but uh, at the end of the day um, they they you know more or less achieve the same function for us namely to to have a view of uh, microorganisms uh, which are otherwise uh, you know not viewable by us uh, uh, through naked eyes so uh, so this is uh, broadly the idea in functionalism that uh, you know, namely that what makes something a mental state is more a matter of what it does uh, not what it is made of so the question of uh, you know the composition the question of substance is given up in favor of uh, you know the the function of of, of a mental state now this idea comes very close to uh, another idea that that is that is uh, pretty much popular in in philosophy of mind which rather was uh, popular for a long time in philosophy of mind uh, namely uh, behaviorism so according to behaviorism uh, which mental states a creature has depends just on how it behaves or is disposed to behave in response to stimuli uh in contrast functionalists typically believe that internal or psychological states can be distinguished with a finer grain than behavior that is distinct internal or psychological states could result in the same behavior so functionalists think that it is what the internal states do that makes them mental states not just what is done by the creature of which they are parts so as we can see that uh, you know behaviorism comes uh, pretty close to uh, very close to uh, to to functionalism and this is why you know sort of uh, when we when we look at behaviorism uh, we must uh, you know try and understand uh, the distinction the main point of distinction between uh, behaviorism and and functionalism so functionalism is basically the idea that uh, that uh, you know mental state uh, basically just depends on uh, the behavior of a person uh, given a particular kind of stimuli so so you know like i mean this is more or less uh, looking at uh, you know looking at uh, 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 a human person you know almost as a kind of a machine so uh, you know like you have certain kind of input uh, in terms of stimuli and then uh, you know there is a particular kind of a response that uh, that you know we generally uh, that is generally triggered off uh, uh you know in 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 our mind so uh, according to you know on this account uh, so we just you know like need to need to sort of look at uh, the behavior i mean all the evidence i mean the only evidence uh, that we have of mind is is you know is uh, is behavior uh, uh, you know the only evidence uh, that that we have at all that there is something called mind is 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 uh, because you know we have certain stimuli which uh, you know evoke certain kind of uh, responses in us and uh, you know we, we we tend to believe because of that that stimuli you know different stimuli affect our mind in certain ways and and uh, then you know, certain behaviors are triggered off so so you know since we do not have any other evidence i mean how else do we study otherwise uh, mind so so the only way of studying it would be to see the effects uh, to see you know like i mean the properties that are visible to us 
So, uh, so on this account, we just uh, you know need to sort of look at the behavior uh, you know of a person in, in in response to a stimuli or you know a certain sort of dispositions uh, of 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 a person. But a functionalist you know goes a little deeper than that. Functionalist uh, does not uh, you know kind of. Uh, uh, makes himself uh, uh, kind of impervious, uh, you know, to to the study of uh, the mental states. Uh, a functionalist, you know, would still want to take uh, the mental, you know, internal mental states uh, seriously, uh, because you know the idea here is uh, again that uh, you know that that you can uh, do, you know same kind of behavior might be triggered, uh, you know, by by maybe by you know uh, may or may not be by by different uh, kind of uh, mental states. So the idea is, uh, you know, like uh, is is that uh, we cannot discount, you know, the idea of mental state, even when we are basically looking at, uh, you know, uh, what basically uh, is the manifest part of, of you know, of. Uh, uh, mental processes, uh, but still, uh, you know, functionalists uh, want to take uh, you know the idea of uh, uh, mental states uh, seriously, and uh, you know want to believe that there are mental states uh, which account for a certain you know uh, processes taking place, certain kind of doings taking place, certain functions, you know. That that take place, uh, whereas behaviorist, uh, you know, sort of is is more outwardly in, in you know in that sense in their in in their approach. So so we we looked at behaviorism, uh, behaviorism and then functionalism because uh, you know uh, these these two terms uh, you know uh, uh, sort of uh, otherwise if we if we don't understand the main distinction between these two two ideas, then you know we we might tend to believe that they are almost uh, sort of uh, we might believe that they are synonymous. Uh, which they are not. Now, uh, having understood that, uh, having talked about that, uh, now let's let's look at uh, you know the history of ideas. Uh, even though it's believed that uh, you know uh, the, the 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 philosophy of mind, uh, you know, we generally believe uh, sort of has its uh, beginnings in in philosophy of Descartes. But uh, you know, we sort of uh, some of the earliest uh, philosophers, uh, Greek philosophers as well as Indian philosophers, uh, did you know anticipate uh, some of these uh, some of these debates, uh, and uh, foremost among them in Greek philosophy is, is Plato. Plato uh, presents, uh, you know, like uh, sort of uh, uh, Plato. First of all, we must, you know, uh, uh, sort of understand here that uh, according to Plato, there are different kind of, uh, you know. Uh, there are different kind of, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, mental scenarios. You know that that we might have. Uh, there is something called, you know, desires uh, that we have, uh, which you know impel us, uh, which uh, you know, which which impel us to do certain things, uh, which uh, you know, uh, which you know, which which is sort of uh, trigger of certain certain kind of uh, you know like uh, impulses in us directed towards certain kind of actions. And uh, uh, as opposed to that, there are there is also you know this process of uh, intellection, which is uh, much more of a free process uh, in the sense that uh, you know that that uh, like we are more autonomous uh, when we are uh, you know are sort of putting ourselves through some kind of uh, you know process of intellection. So there you know we are examining a thing, examining a particular. Uh, you know, debate particular idea, uh, you know, independently from an objective point of view. So, uh, so desires, you know, could be accounted for, you know, like by by sort of uh, by by you know, the nature of body as such. So, our our bodies are such that uh, you know there are like these uh, different kind of sort of uh, uh, desires that we may have. But uh, you know, uh, according to Plato. Uh, uh, soul uh, which is you know something uh, that resides in all of us uh, has a completely different function namely that of uh, philosophization namely that of contemplation namely that of intellection so uh, the process of intellection can only be accounted for uh, by uh, 
soul and uh, as far as uh, though you know it, it is it is contestable because uh, you know uh, because uh, Plato sort of you know uh, divides uh, uh, different kind of you know sort of uh, thinking process into 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 sort of a wider range of uh, categories, but these are the more two main categories: uh, desires and and uh, you know intellection. And uh, intellection, according to him, can only happen uh, in the soul, where desires you know sort of uh, could be accounted for uh, by by. Are, are bodily structures. So, so you know, uh, as as this old proverb goes, uh, uh, you know, mind over body or mind over matter. Uh, so Plato also believes that we often, you know, find ourselves uh, uh, kind of gravitated down uh, to 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 the ground because of you know these uh, these uh, desires uh, that uh, that we may have. And uh, and in Phaedrus, uh, in, in his one of his famous dialogues, Phaedrus, he, he points out that uh, ne- that our soul, uh, which you know, which uh, has this ability to grow, uh, you know, wings, and 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 fly, and and uh, and you know, sort of and and uh, and see far and wide. Uh, that our soul is ne- not able to do that, is not able to develop wings and fly because there are these other things that keep pulling us back uh, and uh, sort of uh, main uh, uh, imp- uh, you know, important thing amongst them is, is, is our desires. So now, given that uh, that you know uh, nature of mind is completely different, uh, namely intellection, which we cannot do through any other faculty inside us, uh, and then there are other things, uh, you know, uh, body accounts for certain other kind of things, and so on and so forth. And that being the case, uh, Plato, in a certain way, you know, comes across, uh, you know, puts across us uh, uh, some of the earliest kind of ruminations, reflections, uh, you know, on on dualism. So his overall idea seems to be. You know, to be geared towards uh, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, some brand of uh, of dualism. So uh, it's believed that uh, Plato presents uh, four main arguments for dualism, which can be, uh, which uh, one, one example I gave just now from Phaedrus. But there's another uh, very important uh, uh, dialogue by him, namely Phaedo. In Phaedo, we come across several arguments, all of them suggestive of some kind of dualism or the other. So, one of the arguments is called cyclical argument. Uh, coming to be and ceasing to be on this uh, argument, uh, uh, the, this argument relies on the notion that opposites rely upon one another and in fact lead to one another in terms of life and death. This leads to the conclusion that if life leads to death, then death must also lead to life. So, the living come from or are in reincarnation of the dead, which then die and are born again. So there is something inside us which dies and something which doesn't. So there are two different kind of things inside us. Second argument is called knowing is uh, remembering or the recollection argument. Uh, The second argument is based on the idea that all knowledge is simply a form of recollection. This is proven by showing that a young untutored boy with no knowledge of maths or geometry can be led to display or arrive at knowledge which he did not know he possessed. How Plato argues could he display such knowledge unless he were recollecting it? So this is a famous uh, idea in in dialogue uh, in, in Plato, which uh, you know, which is repeated in several of his dialogues, uh, including Republic including Phaedrus, uh, including uh, Phaedo. And that idea is that, uh, you know, we cannot have proper knowledge that he calls episteme uh, as opposed to doxa. Uh, We cannot have knowledge of things unless in some sense we already had it in our minds. So basically what we call knowledge or knowing is uh, nothing but recollection of things, something that was already there inside our mind. But uh, through the process of intellection, this something that was already there in our mind comes to the fore, uh, comes to the realm of consciousness and therefore, you know, we become aware of uh, these ideas that were already there inside our mind. 
So, uh, overall, you know, the, 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 the idea here is that, uh, that knowing is a recollection. So, soul, you know, our soul already has all the ideas. It comes along with all the ideas, um, you know, and, and knowledge inside that sense is eternal. So, what we are doing is, you know, that soul, when we have soul, uh, you know, the, 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 all the knowledge is already there in the soul. It's just that uh, through the process of intellection, we get, you know, an access to the knowledge that is already there with us in, in our soul. It's just that because of these other kind of... Uh, uh, other kind of influences like desires and, and so on and so forth, uh, we don't have an access to these ideas that we already have inside ourselves. So through the process of intellection, we get access to them and, uh, and, and, and uh, therefore uh, all kind of knowing is a kind of recollection. Uh, recollection is only of things that we already have. So, and, and you know, th since this process can only take place uh, through intellection and, and uh, since uh, there is you know, something that is uh, in a certain sense, uh, you know, that undergoes decay and, and, you know, dies ultimately and there is something which is eternal, namely these ideas, uh, you know, that, that are there in the soul. Therefore, these, there are these two different kind of substances, uh, you know, which, which we need to think of as, you know, as separate, uh, as separate substances. Now, the third argument offered by uh, Plato is uh, the indestructibility of soul, or the affinity argument. Uh, the third argument attempts to prove that the soul, although it may arguably predate birth, also survives death. Uh, since the body is mortal, changing and made up of different parts, the soul, which seems not to be composed of many parts, must therefore also be immortal and unchanging. Uh, the fourth argument and the last argument uh, uh, is, is called argument from opposites. Since death is the opposite of life and opposites are mutually exclusive, therefore when the body dies, life must go on. So, so basically, you know, in, in, in sort of uh, the dominant idea in, in, in uh, sort of uh, both these arguments is that uh, that soul is indestructible, uh, you know, some kind of idea that we also find in, in, uh, in uh, you know, Bhagavad Gita, where, you know, it's, it's again and again re-emphasized that uh, uh, soul is not born nor does it die, it only transmigrates. And this is also, you know, a dominant idea in, in uh, uh, several of, uh, you know, orthodox philosophies uh, in, in classical uh, Indian philosophical, uh, you know, uh, 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 systems, uh, including Nyaya, who believe that, uh, you know, there, there are these uh, souls which, uh, uh, you know, keep getting reincarnated. Uh, and and uh, and you know on the on the basis of uh, you know, the karma that we we uh, we must have performed in our previous lives. So, uh, since soul is eternal and, and uh, you know, and it has a very different kind of, uh, you know, nature, it has to be very, you know, it has to be different from, in, in nature, ontologically, in substance, uh, from the nature of body, because body is destructible, a body goes, uh, body dies, uh, whereas the soul, is, is, is indestructible and these are, you know, two different things with exactly opposite nature, with exactly, you know, different uh, properties. Therefore, the diff, you know, looking at these uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the extent of difference, they are not, you know, not only sort of, uh, they, they, they are absolutely different, therefore. So, therefore, these two things are, uh, these, uh, these uh, you know, like these two things are exactly of, you know, two opposite kinds and therefore, uh, uh, there are these two different things. Uh, that you know that that uh, that in a certain way seem to combine in us, namely body, which goes and soul, which you know is eternal. So uh, Plato, in that sense, was uh, you know uh, one of the. Uh, uh, you know, in Plato, we find some of the earliest uh, ruminations, uh, you know, which 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 correspond to what we today call uh, dualism. Uh, next in line is uh, another very important philosopher, namely uh, Aristotle. 
Now, Aristotle, you know, very famously comes up with this idea of, uh, you know, form and matter. Uh, he actually, you know, believes that, uh, that, that uh, you know, uh, all material things actually are aspiring towards, you know, their form. But, but, but you know, the main idea here is that, uh, that you know, uh, there, there's this argument that, uh, you know, you could write a word, uh, you know, on, on, uh, several different things. So you could write a word, you know, on on say for example a piece of wax, and when the piece of wax melts, then you know the word would also disappear. Uh, you can write the same word, you know, on on clay, on uh, on on you know a variety of things. Now the form, you know, which here we could uh, you know sort of uh, like the word which uh, basically characterizes the form of an object remains may might remain the same. Whereas the substance on which you know we inscribe this word may differ, uh, uh, depending on you know conditions, depending on availability. So we could write a word on wall, we could write a word on paper, we could write a word on tree, we could write a word on wax, we could write a word on uh, you know clay, so on and so forth. The word would be same even though the substance, the material on which we are writing it, could be different. Therefore. You know, uh, form of an object does not suggest anything about the substance of which it is the form, or, or you know, like I mean, the substance to which it is attached. So, so you know, so basically, idea here is that uh, you know, even in even when we talk about body. Even though the soul is always found encapsulated in body, it does not mean that both are identical. Uh, the two may be, you know, the, the, the two are different. It's just a mode of, you know, mode of existence. A substance, you know, in that sense is only a mode of existence. What matters is the form. And the form, uh, you know, uh, is is in a certain way alienable, uh, you know, from from the substance where it may temporarily manifest itself. But but also, you know, another idea that uh, that you know we find in Aristotle is because you know in a certain way he also anticipates, uh, you know, he also so like we also find some kind of uh, uh, earliest uh, you know forms of ruminations uh, contemplation on on you know on functionalism. Because uh, certain works of Aristotle also describe a function of something as the form of that. So, in that sense, uh, you know, the, what is the form of, say, for example, uh, ears? Form of ears is hearing because this is what ears do. Uh, what is the form of, say, for example, uh, you know, nose? Uh, this form of nose is uh, smelling because this is what it does. What is this form of eyes or sight? Uh, form of sight is, uh, you know, eyes is seeing because this is what we perform through it. So, uh, you know, the idea, you know, like that, that we have already discussed, uh, you know, as a part of uh, definition of functionalism is that uh, instead of, you know, focusing on uh, the the what a thing is made of, we should you know rather study the function performed by that uh, you know by by that uh, thing or the function that you know it accounts for, that state accounts for its being accounts for. So in that sense, since you know since uh, since uh, Aristotle you know, also talks about. Uh, uh, praxis uh, and you know, his idea of fronces. So therefore, you know, we find some kind of uh, like earliest uh, you know indication in the direction of uh, functionalism in, in in Aristotle. So today, uh, viewers, we had a very broad view of of uh, your subject matter of of uh, philosophy of mind. We tried to understand uh, some of the popular terms that we often use within philosophy of mind, and then you know we looked at uh, we started looking at uh, in the history of ideas and the philosophy of mind and we looked at uh, two important uh, thinkers uh, in that line namely Plato and Aristotle. So in our next lecture we will we'll sort of uh, move forward uh, and, and discuss more uh, of, of, of thinkers uh, uh, with regard to philosophy of mind. Uh, thank you. Uh, dear friends, on that note, we would like to thank Dr. Verma for coming to our show and delivering this wonderful lecture. And thank you, dear friends, for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.